following screencast will provide you with a demonstration of Acknowledge's fully automated heart rate variability analysis routine. The HRV analysis option is located under the analysis menu. When you open up the dialog, you're confronted with a multi-tabbed window that guides you through the analysis process. It's important to remember when you're performing HRV to make sure that you have a really nice clean ECG signal. Any noise or corruption to the signal will prevent the algorithm from detecting a reliable tachygram and that's important when performing this type of analysis. So when we go into the HRV dialog box you can see that the first option that it opens up to allows you to determine the method in which you're going to create your tachygram. The default being uh, the QRS detector. The QRS detector is using a modified Pan Tompkins QRS detector, but there is also an option to locate events within the ECG waveform, and I'll get back to this option in a moment. It's also possible to create presets. We've got a preset that's already created here, but you can modify any of these settings. You can say, okay, well, my minimum expected heart rate is going to be about 40 beats per minute, and I don't expect my subject's heart rate to get above 180. I can create a new preset. Now we can toggle between these two modes quite easily. As we work along the line of tabs, the next option you have is to adjust the frequency bands. The default settings are based on typical bands for this type of analysis. We've got the very low frequency, the low frequency, high frequency, and very high frequency, and these are based on the typical settings. And this particular HRV algorithm meets the standards that were, uh, or the frequency domain algorithm standards as published by the European Heart Journal. But it is possible to modify these if you're trying to um, compare results from a published paper and maybe they've used different settings you can come in here and set these to slightly wider or narrower bands. The next tab allows you to control the power spectral density settings. Typically the automatic options will work nicely for you but again if you want to make manual changes to compare settings from different software you can go in and do that but for the purposes of my demonstration I'm going to use the set to automatic. Finally the last tab allows us to control the output from the analysis routine. There are a number of options. The first one allows us to display the artois interval numbers in a table format so this will give you the time interval for every single artois interval. You also have the ability to show the raw tachygram and also the interpolated tachygram. I'm going to use the interpolated one because that's this is the tachygram that the analysis is actually being performed on. We can also output the results so that they're pasted into the journal for further use and then you can also show the spectrum as a new graph window. If we come back over to our setup here you can see we, we've got it set now I'll use the test one uh, to use the QRS detector but before I perform the analysis uh, I wanted to mention that there are two modes that you can operate within. In the background you can see I've selected an area of data here but we could just choose transform entire wave and then the software will run the analysis over the entire file. But for this demonstration I'm going to use this selected area. I hit OK. These are the results from the analysis. The very low, low, high and very high frequency values, sympathetic, vagal, and then my ratio sympathetic to vagal balance. I can copy these to the clipboard so that I can paste them into another file. 
this is my um, power spectral density graph and here is the interpolated tachygram so this is each of the R to R intervals for that particular waveform in the vertical display you can see we, we're um, displaying the data in seconds so around about three quarters of a second or 750 milliseconds and then this is our original raw data and down below I selected to paste my values down into the journal. Okay, if I close that out or actually if I clear this out and then close it I can now show you the option which is to use the events. Now at the moment this file doesn't contain any events so I need to go into the analysis menu and I'm going to locate ECG complex boundaries so the software is going to go through and it's going to locate each of the points of the ECG complex and it's pasted a QRS label at the top of each of my waveforms like so. Now when we go into the analysis dialog we can select this option to use events and we can use any events that are created it just so happens that this one is set to QRS peak and they're located in channel 1 ECG and I'm going to leave my output settings as they were hit OK so this time we've performed the analysis over the entire file there's my tachygram there's my um, PSD graph and then if we come back to our raw data again there we have the results pasted down below so again this dialog allows us to choose between the QRS detector using events within the data set the frequency bands for the very low low high and very high frequency ranges use automatic or manual PSD settings and then control the output. So that concludes this demonstration of the Acknowledge Heart Rate Variability Analysis Routine.